there was a clinical prediction rule created and published in 2003 and 2004. So this was derived and validated that included the following characteristics. Duration of symptoms less than 16 days, hip internal rotation of at least 35 degrees, lumbar segmental hypermobility, hypomobility, excuse me, no symptoms distal to the knee, a score of less than 19 on the FABQ. Four of five of those suggested that a person would benefit 25-fold if they received a manipulation versus not. So in the clinical prediction rule by Flynn and Childs and colleagues, they used a technique that is commonly referred to either as the Earhart roll or the Chicago roll. And there is a specific way of doing it. It's an easy technique to do. It's very, very safe. Rarely will you have any adverse response. And I want to show you how the setup is and how the technique is actually performed. So as the patient is supine, you're going to position them in a V away from you. So I'm going to take the legs and I'm going to slide them in this direction and the same with the trunk. I am going to be targeting the manipulation on the side opposite of me. We'll probably get an L5-S1 gapping with this, but it could be a number of facets that actually move. The next thing I'm going to ask the patient to do is lace your hands behind your head. Now the technique I'm going to show you is a real easy one. I'm only going to use one part of the arm. Some people will actually roll their hands through both arms, but I'm going to use only one. And keep those fingers laced if you would. Good. I'm going to take my arm through it like this, and what I'm doing is taking my fist and sinking it into the plinth on this side. I can control how much rotation I want on the trunk very easily just by pulling back and controlling the upper trunk region with my hand. The other hand is going to go in the ASIS. I'm going to pressure downward at the same time that I pull the patient back like this and then at the very end when I really start to feel the pressure come up I apply a real quick thrust to the low back. It's all about the positioning. By winding the patient up you'll place them in the position that a very moderate thrust will do the work and you'll get the gapping response that you actually want. Childs and colleagues suggested that if you correctly categorize people in the proper groups, they will and receive the intervention that they were targeted to receive, that the outcomes will actually be better. Their findings suggested that manipulation was better for those who received CPR, the CPR or who met the CPR than those who did not.